Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for waiting for us to solve our technical issues before we come online. Um, I've seen already on the chat that you're introducing yourselves. Um, so, Vera from Canada. So, Sarah from Texas. Ghoster from the UK. Cecilia, hi. So, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Lettering Grid. I have beautiful work to show today. Uh, for those that don't know what the Lettering Grid is about, this is a public event of our academy, especially for our students in the Lettering Seminar. As you know, the Lettering Seminar is the signature or my signature course that I offer throughout the year uh, to teach new hand lettering masters better their lettering and create their best work yet. So what we do in this lettering creed is essentially to correct or to criticize or give critique to submissions from our students, but we also accept viewers from outside of our academy. And we take one project in the lettering creed to take part of this event. So what we would do actually throughout this critique, which will last around 40 minutes is to go through these projects and give feedback. And what I like about the lettering grids is that it's not only to, um, to critique or to criticize the projects, but also to highlight their best bits. And what I think is really good for you that you're joining is that it allows you to train your, what I call the typo typographic eye. It allows you to sort of train your eye to identify the things that are really good and to identify the things that, are, or the, the, the room for improvement in a lettering piece, right? So I will be looking at the um, chat all the time. So I will be not the only one here giving feedback on the projects, but you will be also giving feedback on the projects of everyone here in this lettering grid. So with no further ado, I am gonna start. So hello everyone who has just joined, Natha Link, uh, Aeon, um, Alex Sika from Bucharest. Um, so I'm gonna be reading on the chat all the comments you do on the, um, on the pieces and I am gonna pick up on that to give feedback to um, to Timothy, to Sarah, to Rebecca, and to a um, a guest, um, a guest a student that is not in our academy, but it's called Sarah, and we have uh, we are gonna feature her project on this um, on this lettering grid. So let's start. I have this first project by Timothy. So Timothy, I love what you're doing here. First. I see here, I don't know why, but I had the feeling that this is for a uh, side project of yours. I don't know if you're on the chat, but it sounds like something you're gonna do um, as a side project or something you want to do as a side project. So I love this, uh, this first uh, sketch for your lettering piece. So I see that you're trying to create a shape here. So let me just create a layer with this. Um, so I see that you're trying to create a shape for your lettering. And what I think is really challenging from your lettering piece is that you have these fluent strokes, right? So all these very um, fluid strokes that have to do with the script lettering and all the flourishing around it. And this, these are the elements that you will use to sort of create this geometrical shape, right? Uh, so that's challenge number one. Um, what I think is also great, and you can write on the chat all the comments you would like to make about this project. I will go on and speak about it, and I will pick, on, uh, pick up on the chat all the things that you also want to add to this particular project. So... What I really like about the project you're doing right now is that you are be being really consistent in your slant. So all your letters are, you know, working with the same slant, which is really important in script lettering. I always say that in script lettering, we're essentially drawing a hand that writes. And when a hand is writing, it's usually writing with 
the same slant and the same speed and the same um, rhythm, right? So keeping that rhythm, that slant, that speed consistently is one of the first, like the number one challenges of script lettering. And I think you're doing a great job here, Timothy. Um, the other thing that I think is really challenging and you're doing a great job with is all this flourishing, right? So flourishing, you know how it is. Like you add one flourish here and you need one flourish there and you suddenly need one there and suddenly your, your lettering piece is like full of uncontrolled flourishing. And I think it's something you're controlling here very good. I see also that um, you are very, you're being very intelligent in the way you create those flourishes. So I see that you are making your letters flourish. I, I say it like this when, when I speak about script lettering and how to create flourishes around it. Um, so you are sort of pulling your flourishes out of your shape. So you see that happening in your R, you see that happening in, your, uh, in the downstroke of the uh, Y, um, you see that happening also on the capital letters, right? So that means that the flourishes are being pulled out of the letter shapes themselves. They are not being attached. Um, that said, I see that there are some that are being kind of, you know, added to the lettering piece, which is this one right here and that one right here. And I wonder if there is some sort of way of um, having those flourishes naturally flowing out of your letter forms, right? If there is a way perhaps to make this flourish do that work here, or if there is a way to, um, to make the lower or the, sorry, the downstroke of the Y sort of covering this space for you here, right? So whenever, when it comes to flourishing, I always try to kind of have those flourishes flow naturally out of the letter forms themselves rather than have them attached or as add-ons to my lettering. And um, yeah, that would be my, um, my advice, that you try to find other ways to create, because I see what you're trying to do here. You're trying to cover up for that space. Um, and I wonder if there's a more natural way of doing that. So with that said, I also want to wonder if you really need to recreate this triangle, right? Because I see that this flourishing, this one right here and that one right here that you're adding um, are essentially to keep that triangular shape going. And I'm not sure this triangular shape really relates to the content of the lettering piece. You know, when we are creating or when creating lettering, we are essentially telling a story and we are telling a story with two things. So one is the text we are illustrating and the other one is the shape of that text, right? So I wonder which story you want to tell with this triangular shape um, and whether you need that triangular shape to be happening, right? So because liberating yourself and your lettering from that triangular shape will perhaps make you rethink the use of these two um, flourishes that you are just attaching to your lettering to recreate that shape. I hope that is clear. So I'm picking up on some comments on the chat. So Rebecca is saying the flourishing looks great, really consistent in shape and style. I think as well that is super um super nicely done. Um, I especially like the way um, you have solved this particular um, bit of your design here. And again, I wonder if the flourishing that you're kind of attaching here to the, um, to the letter forms, if you can actually use some of your letter forms to do that, or if the bar of your T can do some of that work over there for you, so I will always try to find possible ways to have those flourishes flowing naturally out of your letter forms. 
the other thing or the other thing that I really like is that you have consistency in the stroke width. Um, so I can see that the T's are having kind of the same weight. Um, I can see that you're, you know, seeking the same result on the L and the Y and the I right here. Um, what I see is that the, when it comes to the rounded shapes, um, those shapes become a little bit more fragile. So I will, I would just try to reconsider uh, in which way you can add more weight to your rounded shapes. So you can see that the E, the A, um, and let me know in the chat, can you see that as well, that the E, the, the A are very light in terms of weight? Um, so I would try to reconsider that. The same happens with the L, right? So you can see here that you know, your downstroke is getting very thin um, in the lower part. So how can you make you know, how can you create uh, or achieve the same thickness on your fluent strokes or, or your rounded st strokes, like for instance, the A and the, the L, um, than you are achieving on your straight strokes? I hope that was clear. So let me pick up on the chat. So Cecilia is saying, I have difficulties making flourishes. It's hard for me to make them look light and pleasant. Yeah, definitely. It's, I say, I would say it's like the most, um, the biggest challenge of flourishing to make it, to make it look natural, to make it look like, you know, it's a hand that is flowing in the paper and, um, to make it look like, you know, it's seamless and kind of very easy. Right. Um, and also to make it, to make it nice and, working with the composition without being overwhelming or oversaturated of flourishing. So very saying, maybe make the Y look a bit more natural instead of that small wiggle that is happening. So let me see. So that, I think you're referring to that curve that is happening on that Y. Um, yeah, that, that's a good suggestion. I think you can, uh, Timothy, you can totally try that out to see if you can simplify that Y to make it look a bit more natural. Um, you will still have, so I think what Vera is saying is that essentially that, that downstroke is gonna just go down straight and then you have the flourishing. So whatever curve you want to add to your Y, you will have this flourish around it, or you will have this, um, this flourish you can play with, right? So I think that's definitely something you can, you can try and see how that works for you, if, if that works better with the composition. Lastly, um, so lastly, I would say that the... The other thing you can notice here is that your T's are very similar to your L, right? So when I look at your double T here, I, I have a hard time to, I understand by context and because we are speaking about letters and lettering and you know, everything is around this and I can imagine that it says letter, but it's not obvious. First, because the middle bar is not so strong, right? I know that you're trying to do a middle bar with this um, downstroke of the Y, but the middle bar is not so clear, right? And also when I look at your T's next to your L, they're very similar shapes. So my suggestion here would be to perhaps differentiate them more. So to, to find a way to separate them visually so your L, for instance, could have a little bit of a curve, right? I'm just gonna zoom in. So perhaps your L could have a little bit of a curve, right? And perhaps your T's could have kind of like a, like a different, I would say like normally in the, in the script, um, shape of a T, I would say that the T is lower than the L generally, 
Um, and I would just suggest to cut those shapes a little bit so that they are not looking as an L so much. And I'm just wondering in which way can you, um, can you create a stronger bar for those T's? Either adding a little bit of weight to the, uh, to the, um, the Y or, um, or perhaps kind of creating a bar for those letters and have the Y flow on top of it or something like this. But um, definitely they need a little bit more readability to, you know, you need a little bit more readability to those letter forms, right? So I hope that was useful for you. I don't know if the chat has another comment for this uh, project. If not, I'm going to move forward. Um, lastly, and this is something I mentioned in all the lettering creeds, is that whenever you're working with capital letters, like here and there, try to think of those capital letters as something, you know, as a system. So they should have sort of the same complexity, the same weight, the same size. So when you look at the D next to the L, the L looks like a much more expanded shape, right? In, in comparison with that D, right? The D seems like a much more um, compact shape and the L is more much more expanded. It's like dancing, right? So I would just either turn that L into something more compact or um, turn that D into something more expressive and flamboyant, right? So we're moving on to the next project by Sarah. So Sarah, so Sarah, so I'm trying to read this first, which is I think something really important when it comes to lettering. I love, I love this, this inspiration in black letter and the fact that your lettering is made with this Brodney principle. So for those that don't know, like the Brodney principle is like, it comes from calligraphy and you might have seen this somewhere. Like there's a, 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 a tool to do calligraphy that is, it's a nib that has like a flat uh, a tip, right? So the, to draw with that, um, tool, you have to sort of, um, you know, position the, the tool in a certain uh, angle and just move the tool, right? And this is kind of done with the same principle. And I can see by these features and that feature that this is inspired in black letter. So Sarah, you're here on the chat. Amazing. So um, I would love to hear from everyone in the chat like what what are the things from this project that you find really great and what are the things that you would like or you would suggest Sarah to look into or to improve or what are the things you would suggest she could include in her next iteration um, on this lettering piece so I really like these features that you're incorporating from black letter this kind of, you know, these dots, I would say, from black letter. I love this consistency all throughout your lettering that it has to do with this broad nib calligraphy. Um, I think you really, you really made sure that all the letters are really consistent and they all belong to the same family. And I think that's great. Um, as, at a first glance, I'm having an issue to read this and what I'm reading here is send food. Just let me know in the chat, Sarah, if this is correct, if this is what is written here. Um, also, in the very beginning, I had read like seafood, but then I saw this D here. So I think there's a thing with that. Um, and I wonder if there's a way to improve that. So one thing that is tricky about black letter um and i love black letter as a lettering style personally but one thing that is tricky about black letter is that many of the shapes of black letter 
are not really readable for our contemporary eye. So many of us are um, not prepared anymore to read black letter. So, so I always say that whenever you're working with black letter, it is okay to adapt those shapes to a contemporary eye. So for instance, in, in, for a contemporary eye like ours, um, an N or a, a, an uppercase N doesn't look like this. Um, I would say that for a contemporary eye, a, an uppercase N looks a bit more like this. We recognize an N essentially for this diagonal, right? And when this diagonal is missing, we start wondering, like, wh what, is, what is that? Is, is this an H? Is this a, you know, what is that? Um, so the, the main feature of an N for our contemporary eye and for our contemporary models is this very strong, um, very strong diagonal, right? So that's what is missing there. And I mentioned this because maybe there's a way to marry the features of black letter with the features or the kind of the principles of an N, how it looks nowadays, right? So you can still use these dots and you can still use those strokes and you can still use these features and marry them into a shape that is a bit more recognizable as an N. Um, so... Yeah, I, th I think there's there's a couple of us that had this, you know, this feeling of, you know, that initial um, re or reading initially like sand food, right? Or seafood, sorry. The the so Sarah is saying the curves are really beautiful, particularly in the S and the D. Maybe you could you could increase the readability by removing the border and slightly thickening the thinnest line in the end. Yeah, so Lucero is also saying that the end is hard to read. Read a oin is saying legibility in the end. Um, yeah, so Sarah, I see that you were looking at historical models and I really congratulate you for that. I'm really, you know, in the learning seminar, I really, um, I really make a point on this. Like I really say like, hey, it's much better to look into contemporary, like into um, um, historical models to find inspiration for your lettering rather than scrolling through your Instagram account or going on Pinterest, right? So I always make a, a, a strong emphasis on like research and kind of looking into like the real foundations of lettering and letter design and letter creation right and i think i can see that you were um finding inspiration in historical models however what i always encourage my students is to readapt those shapes readapt those features into more readable shapes so shapes that we can read nowadays right because this is super important in lettering that whatever you're writing whatever you're trying to communicate gets through Right. So, um, so Sarah was, was suggesting to remove this, uh, this frame around, um, perhaps I think, I think I agree with that. Perhaps it's like, is since it's using the same stroke width than the rest of the lettering, it's kind of confusing. Sometimes I feel like, well, is th does this belong to the to this letter or not? Like it might also like affect readability. I think you could easily find a solution by making those lines thinner, you know, and having that frame being a little bit thinner. Um, perhaps even, and this is just an idea that I'm throwing out there, Perhaps by having those um, those lines thinner on the frame, you can also then later start playing with those lines around your lettering and kind of create some sort of like decoration within your lettering with those thin lines so that the frame and the lettering are kind of connected through that line work. So this is something I just thought of and I'm just throwing it out there for you um so the other thing I'm gonna pick up on the mm, 
Yeah, so Rebecca is saying uh, it would be great to see at the next stage some some of that detail that you can usually see on black letter, right? So um, I think perhaps doing some of that line work that I was suggesting can help you add a bit more of that um, that uh, decorative work that the black letter has, right? So sometimes you find it next to the F. It looks kind of like this. Um, Definitely, if you have been looking into historical models, you know what I'm talking about and you will find a lot of resources. So I trust that you can definitely do that. So apart from that, um, I think it's great that you were trying to create variations between two letters like the D, um, the D at the top and the D at the bottom. Whenever you have two letters repeating, try to create those variations so that you know it doesn't become visually boring i would say why not do the same with your o's so perhaps you can just by adding just one more of those details to this o you can already create some variation between those two letters so you don't have those two o's um next to each other um kind of looking exactly the same right so the same way you did it with your d you can definitely do it with your o um, lastly, when I look at, at your capital letter F here, and I was mentioning that before, um, I'm using a hat today just for you. Um, so lastly, before, um, before in the previous, uh, lettering piece, I was mentioning that the, whenever there's two capital letters in your lettering, try to design them together. So try to keep your eye in both at the same time. So the same happens here, like your S and your F, whenever you draw them, try to keep an eye on both and try to see what can you bring from one to the other. So when I look at your F, it has this two, this double stroke here, right? Which I love. I think this is really characteristic of black letter and it really makes it look just by doing that. It makes it look like a capital letter. So, how can you create the same visual effect or the visual um, weight onto your S? Can you add perhaps some sort of a double stroke here? How can you make your S as complex as your F? And how can you make that in size or in, yeah, like in complexity and in size as well? Because if you look at your S, it's really, it's a lot smaller in comparison with your F, right? So Sarah, you were saying, that's great, make it lighter, working with lines and letter shapes that work for our eyes today. Yeah, exactly. I think those are the like the key points of your, you know, what, what describes a little bit like your next steps with this, um, with this letter in piece. And I think also I would add this idea of like designing your two capital letters in a way that they are equally complex, equally sized and equally important, right? Amazing. So we can move on to the next letter in piece from Sarah. Let us know if that, that was useful. So we have another lettering piece from Rebecca. Rebecca, so I've seen in our um, student community the entire process of Rebecca. So in the lettering seminar, we also have this, um, this group where we can interact, share our progress. And I love that we have the opportunity to see, to follow up on everyone's process. And we get to see, we get to give each other feedback on the platform, but then we move on to this lettering crits where we give like intensive uh, critique on the projects. And Rebecca's project already got some comments on the uh, community within the lettering seminar. And now you are, Rebecca, on to the digital uh process or the digital the digitization of your lettering so and I, I can see how you incorporated all the um, the feedback we gave you during uh, or in the community um, so 
when I see when I see this project, I feel well. Actually, I I think this has this format actually. So it has a vertical format. We have placed it into a, a horizontal or landscape form format um, for the means of this lettering grid. But I love how you have first incorporated a font for your lettering piece. This is a question that many ask, which is like, okay, if I'm doing lettering. Can I also use fonts or how do I work? How do I go about when I have many words or when I have a block of text that additionally to my lettering, right? So my advice is always like, it's fine to use fonts as long as they can work with the rest of the lettering. And what I love about your font choice here is that the font choice is kind of having the same weight than the decorative elements. And this is what binds them together. So the, cho the, the, um, the font is a sans serif font that has the same features or the same stroke width than the decorative elements that Rebecca is using in her lettering piece. And I think this is so on point with how you can go about choosing a font for your project, for your lettering project. So, so yes, Rebecca, so it is portrait, exactly. So this is a portrait um, design. So I'm just reading Sarah's uh, comments on, on the feedback we gave her. I'm so glad that it helped Sarah. So, I would love to hear on the chat, what, what are the things that you will suggest um, Rebecca um, for her next steps with this lettering piece? Um, I would also love to hear what are the things that you think are really great or what that she has nailed with this lettering piece. I think personally that it's a very balanced lettering piece. I think it's really intelligent the way you have used decorative elements and illustrations to balance out your lettering piece and to sort of cover up those spaces that were like blank spaces in your lettering piece. Um, you know, when we are working in a lettering composition, we don't only work with letter forms themselves, but also with other elements so we can use decorative elements we can use illustrations uh, we can even use pictures if we want to like we can combine our lettering with other things um, that are um, beneficial for our lettering piece right so Eoin is saying I love the consistency of baked and the angle yeah absolutely I also love the consistency of bake, baked and um, and how you added this 3D that really stands out and the work you have done inside the letter forms, right? So all this decorative work that you have done here um, is really consistent in all the letter forms, right? So one thing that I did notice and I think will make your life a lot easier when it comes to your digital drawing because Rebecca, I know that you are already in the digital stage of your um, of your lettering and what we do in the lettering seminar is that we teach how to digitize, how to vectorize your letter forms. So you use vectors to vectorize those letter forms and gain with the vectors, gain control of, over the shapes. And I think one thing that can really help you is to draw so I can see that this is this is a shape that all together, right? So you drew that shape all together, right? And what I would suggest is that you first draw that stroke over there separately from that stroke over there. And this is because first it is made like this. So if you go back to the calligraphic origin of this essentially when you do this callig calligraphically or like with calligraphy you would do first the downstroke and then that 
right? So these will be two separate strokes and I would just suggest you to draw them at separate stroke, strokes. And whenever you have a letter, think again, what is the origin, like the calligraphic origin of that letter and draw those strokes as separate strokes. Like if they were written as separate strokes, draw them as well as separate strokes. The result will be much better. The digitization process will be a lot easier and you will also obtain better shapes because if you separate those two strokes, that one and that one, then on the upper stroke, you will only have to, you know, draw those shapes, right? And you will get so I'm, I'm drawing the anchor points here. I'm getting a little bit technical so that Rebecca understands and can implement her in, in the drawing. Um, so by, you know, by drawing this upper shape as a separate form, you can, um, you can create a much better, you can achieve a much better curve because you have less points, right? So you can do that with, that shape over there, you can also do that with this T over there, right? So you will want to have two separate strokes and that will make it a lot, look a lot sharper, a lot better, I would say. So let me read the chat. I feel like today can borrow from that. Okay. Trying to and the angle. Okay, Sonia. Sonia is saying, I really love how it's looking. I would just fix the word today, especially the letter T, maybe to accommodate the letters more straight instead of being inclined. Yeah, so you're suggesting, Sonia, to make this not in a curve, to make this today not sit in a curve, but actually on a straight line. Could be, I mean, it will be really consistent with how this letter forms are sitting here and have like a, another straight uh, line there. Um, so if I look at the main lines of this design, they will look like kind of like this, right? So you have freshly baked and today. So yeah, that will make sense actually. Um, I think it could also work this way. Um, so that's just a suggestion for Rebecca and you will decide whether you want to implement this or not. Uh, so Luz is saying the space between the E and the D on baked is a bit too big. Yeah, here, right. That's correct. Um, but I think that the composition as a whole is really nice and balanced. Yeah. So I think that's a very good suggestion. You can just easily move the D a little bit towards the, the, the E. Um, I think what is, you know, pushing you to add a bit more space is because you have this feature here. So either you keep the feature and you just pull those two letters together, or you can get rid of that feature or make it flow um, to the, sorry, to the, like, instead of like uprights downwards, right? So that's just an idea. Um, and the last comment I'm gonna... So yeah, so, uh, so Cecilia is saying that the T looks like it's gonna fall onto the other letters. And that's true, like it, it does seem that um, it, it's a little bit unstable. And I think it has to do perhaps because all of these letters sort of have uh, variable slants, right? So perhaps, you know, this is a suggestion of having like this, the straight line and the, like a consistent slant for your letter will solve a lot for your letters in the word today will solve a lot of problems. So yeah, I think, I think we're pretty much done with this one Rebecca great work I love I love how the, how this is moving forward and I'm looking forward to see it in the in the student community um, with color and everything and we have today a guest student Sarah who submitted um, 
a project. So So Sarah is working on a kind of a monoline design and I really like what um, what you're doing really here. Like I see that you're trying to create the shape with your flourishing, which is super, super challenging. And I congratulate you for being so courageous. Um, when working with flourishes, I would say try to keep an eye on the repetition so that your flourishing doesn't turn into something that is like a copy or looks like a copy paste of the flourishing next to it. So when I look at those shapes here, they are kind of a repeating pattern and it just feels visually um, uninteresting. So whatever variations you can create in those shapes will already make them look a lot better. So for instance, if your O, instead of having that uh, flourish like this, will have a flourish like looking downwards, it will be already a different story. Um, another thing you can try is not to have like the same, um, like the same size of flourish so that, you know, you have different sizes around your lettering and it looks more visually interesting, right? So whatever is happening here on the right, you will want a little bit more of that on the left. So all these variations that you're creating here, this kind of playful uh, swirls that you're having um, coming out of your letter forms are really, you know, are, are really visually interesting. Like there's something different going on every time. Whereas on the, on the left side of your lettering, there's this kind of pattern, uh, right? So that's one of the things. Let me just read on on the chat so sarah hi you're there so yes you had trouble with those three on the left i can i can totally see that and um that's why i'm i'm wondering if you can you know break those down into like smaller bits perhaps you know like other shapes and not just trying to cover up those spaces with huge uh flourishing but just break those huge flourishes down into smaller flourishing um, the other thing I want to point out is that the Y here looks like a like a capital Y, and I, I I'm always trying to be grammatically um, correct with that. Perhaps it's my training working with clients; they will always say like, "Oh yeah, this is beautiful," but you made a typo there, or there, you know, actually that quote had a uh, yeah like a quote mark, or don't forget the comma, or all this stuff, like all the grammatics that come to, that come with text um, are really important when you work professionally. And I think are, it's great to train yourself into that, even if you're not working professionally yet, but I think it's very important to train yourself into that. So um, Rebecca is saying that you really love the overall style of the lettering, looks really balanced in the letters themselves. Yeah, I think so. I think also that there's, you know, a rhythm to them. You can see that the, you know, the age, the, the, the space within the letter or the, the width of the letters is very consistent. And I love that. Um, I think it really, it really feels like the same hand is writing the, the, the lettering. So coming back to the, to the why, um, I would just go ahead and make this a little bit lower so that it doesn't look like a capital letter. Um, I will also wonder if you can bring some of the flourishing that you have going on outside of your lettering into the lettering. So I see so many beautiful opportunities to do that here, there, um, over there, um, over here so many opportunities to just make your letters flourish really and and i feel like this will integrate your outer uh visual 
visuals <laughs> into the lettering, right? Because right now you have a lettering. I'm just gonna delete, not delete permanently, but oh, I was drawing on top of it. I forgot to draw on, on, the, on the previous layer. But what I mean is that, you know, you have right now a lettering that has some sort of like frame around and created by, by these flourishes. And what I'm encouraging you to do is to bring the flourishes within the composition, right? So that you also have the flourishes within the composition. Yeah, the first A is really nice. I agree with you, Luz. Um, so, and what I mentioned before in the first, I think the first lettering piece we went through, um, the, I would just try to find ways to, instead of attaching a flourish here, to, you know, bring, like, find it somewhere in a letter. It could be anywhere. It could be in your A. It could be that this turns into, you know, a flourish. It could be that um, you have an extra flourish there for your A. And then that, that flourish, instead of being an attachment, is just something that flows naturally out of your letter forms, right? Let me see if there's anything. So, Sarah, you're worried that it will look too messy if integrated, um, if the flourishes are integrated in the composition. But seeing the way you have done it, I feel more confident about trying it. I would say, and this goes for everyone uh, on the chat, I would say that if there's something that lettering and drawing letters can teach us about anything else in life is that you really you know things in your head looks look a lot different um, on paper so whenever you have an idea you definitely need to try it out and and see if that works because some things that you think like oh this is not gonna work finally when you do it you realize like oh okay it did work you know and you need to really try it out and see how that works out right so i think in typography um or when you draw lettering i always encourage you to not not to dismiss an idea before trying it out so whenever you have the the drive to do something like you were mentioning just now Sarah like okay I was thinking of adding those flourishes but I didn't do it because I thought they would look messy like I know how that feels I know that sometimes we we feel that it's gonna ruin the drawing, but always try to find techniques and ways in which you can try all those ideas without uh, ruining your drawing, without like overriding or over overriding, yeah, on your last uh, stage. And this is why in, in the lettering seminar we actually use a technique that is really encourages uh, drawing and trying out these things easily without. Um, without losing what you have done before. So I think Sarah, this is our last project. For everyone who joined today, I appreciate that you, I appreciate that you were giving all those comments on the chat. I hope this um, lettering critic has opened your eyes and also like has helped you kind of train your um your awareness of what can be improved in your lettering pieces for those that are on the lettering seminar see you on the next studio hours for those that are not <coughs> you will probably receive an invitation from me to join the lettering seminars and join the student group in the lettering seminar after this session and definitely join us in the next lettering grid we will, of course, like always, receive submissions from students, but also receive submissions from a guest, an external guest who will be also having the chance to have the work or their work criticized or, uh, you know, getting feedback from all of us in the learning seminar. So thank you so much for joining today. Bye bye and see you next time.
Thank you.